go for an hour and I talk for like, f ask you questions for about 45 minutes and then um, open it up to questions. Should we, do we need to end at 10 exactly or can we go a little late or what would you like to do? Yeah, because I'm sorry, we, we started late. I think we go a little late until 10, 10. long since we've spoken and we already I got Sandy in the meantime to do a little a little uh, thing about why it's great to shoot in Miami so we, we took care of Miami for a little bit there um, but it was super fun uh, to work with you guys um, so but I would like to start somewhere completely different and I want to ask you first Peter um, when was the first time that you thought that you wanted to become a filmmaker? <laughs> um, well, 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 first everyone, I'm sorry I was late to the, the, the meeting and I'm hoping everyone's uh, do, doing okay. And uh, that, that question, well, I haven't been asked that for a while. Um, I grew up in the countryside in, uh, in England and there wasn't a whole lot of culture around me. And, um, one day I saw this magazine um, called The Face Magazine, which was a cultural magazine involving music, uh, fashion, um, and, and sometimes film. And that's where I really became interested in film. That was early, early teenage years. And that magazine actually really influenced me, not just as a filmmaker, but also in terms of how slam dance is run as well. So oh. that was a very sort of street orientated uh, magazine, uh, really looking at uh, new trends and fashions that were coming up from all different types of places in, in the United Kingdom, not just London, but Glasgow, you know, places in Scotland, the north of England. And it really was a great influence on my, my filmmaking and really uh, on standards as well. I think Face Magazine has had a big influence on a lot of people. Right. I don't know if other people, if other people remember that magazine, but um, so then what did you actually do about it? Once you had had that inspiration, what did, what was the first step you took in your filmmaking career? Well, probably like all of us, you know, you start reading about filmmakers and you start watching, you know, watching more films and then you start to learn about, you know, their also sort of various auteur theories or their style of, you know, their style of filmmaking and writing. Um, and once again, you know, filmmakers like Derek Jarman and Penelope Spurvis, they were very influential, you know, on, on me when I was, when I was growing up and young, but also then going back to older directors as well, I was really influenced by silent, um, by silent films. Um, uh, and, and also silent, silent comedies as well. Um, and then, you know, then you start making, you know, back then it was, it was film. I was using eight, eight mil super, super eight and then into video and then into, and then, then into college. I actually didn't study, uh, film formally at college. I did, I added film into that, uh, while I was, while I was studying, um, but that's where I really sort of started to learn about filmmaking when I was at college, even though I wasn't actually at college for st to study filmmaking. But that's where I really sort of, I really got What's that? What did you study? I, um, I studied uh, art history with a bunch of uh, socialists. Uh -huh, they, were very, right. they, they were very extreme and they, it was great. It was a really great experience. Right. Uh, with people like John Walker, who believe that every painting in the British Museum should be lent out like a library book and everyone should be able to take it home and put it on their wall and share the experience of a painting. Yes. Um, and, and right, just like Peter Ware. Um, and then, um, and then I, um, and then I went to the other side uh, for my graduate degree. I went to Oxford and again, I studied history of art there. And so history of art has obviously been a very big influence on my, my filmmaking and again, how um, on Smartlands as well. And so uh, what was it that um, I, I feel as though it was 25 years ago that Slam Dance started. So what was it that as you as a filmmaker caused you to actually 
set about starting that festival? Yeah, well, I made a real low budget film. I produced a real low budget film called Loser. And um, eventually that film did, did, did uh, we, we got it into, we got it into a pretty big theatrical um, uh, release. Uh, but it was because really of slam bats. And so I was one of the founding filmmakers that didn't get their films that year, 1995, into, into Sundance. Yeah. And so that's why we started slam bats. Um, we, 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 we were a bunch of rejects. You know, we, did, we, we didn't make the grade, we didn't make the cut, but um, we didn't sort of give up um, on wanting to have a showcase for our work. And we're all first time filmmakers. And we all wanted to find an audience and festivals obviously are a very good place to find an audience. And in Park City, as you know, as we all know, um, a lot of industry people go to that place and that's where you can get noticed. So that's what we wanted to do as well. We wanted to get noticed. And so we turned up and uh, there's definitely a sort of sense of, you know, there goes the, there goes the neighborhood with us being in town. <laughs> um, but what happened was we realized there were going to be other filmmakers like us that wanted to have that same opportunity. Um, and that's why we continued. And that's why we continued Sundance. And, um, and it was because of that festival that my first film that I produced was able to get, you know, good reviews. It found a distributor, it got out there into the theaters. Um, and, you know, really help them progress the careers um, of the film, of, you know, the filmmakers involved and also other filmmakers that were the first standouts as well. I mean, it made its, made its mark. I have to say, if we look at those films from 1995 in comparison with the films that we're seeing in standouts these days, I'm not sure many of them would get into the festival. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, Anyway, we, conti we, we continued on. It was my, my first start here with a, with a, with a feature film um, in the United States. And it was also the start of Slam Dance as well. That's such an interesting comment. I, I don't know if I want to wait on it or, come, or talk about it now, but uh, it may be, you know, it may have just been a, a, a statement of humility that, you know, those films wouldn't have got in now. But, Oh, in those 25 years, what do you see different in the quality of the submissions you get? I mean, obviously, it's the slam dance just has a, an international name now. So 25 years on, that's different. But what, what do you think has changed in 25 years? Well, if you look at it from a sort of an art point of view, you could say that we were a bunch of outsiders and our art was indeed outsider art, right, coming in and, and we were certainly independent filmmakers, but, you know, the standard in which our films were made, it was really, it was really scrappy, it was really hard. You know, even back in 1995, a lot of those Sundance pictures did have budgets, they did already did have distribution and that's what we we're up against, right? right? But I think one of the, 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 the main changes that has taken place is just the the filmmakers now so of how to really learn quickly um, through technology and just how independent film has just grown so much over the last 25 years. It's, it's, it's truly global. You know, it's not just the US or, you know, it, 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 you know England, it's all over the world. And, you know, pockets of independent filmmakers, really great filmmakers turn up into these really odd parts of the world now with not just a single filmmaker, but with a style of filmmaking coming out of a particular region in the world, which is, which is awesome. But te technology has connected us. Technology has enabled us to make real low budget films really now for, you know, in, in a way where the quality is so much better than, than, it, than it was back in 1995. I know we love film. Of course, back then it was definitely a film medium. The film I produced was on 35 millimeter film. These days, it's mostly digital, um, but that has really, I think, advanced the, um, the, the, the quality of, of filmmaking. But of course, it always comes back to the story, the screenplay. And I think generally writing has also improved in the world of independent over the last 25 years, because once again, of how we're able to share our stories and how we're able to learn in a, um, 
I wouldn't say necessarily in a quicker way, but in a more reasoned way where we have access to um, a lot more information around what, in, in what is around us um, during, you know, during our time of creativity. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's really great to hear because I'm so used to people talking about, oh, well, back then it used to be so good and now it sucks. So I just really appreciate, you know, a more positive uh, attitude, um, which you always have. So, uh, so I, I feel as though slam dance is unique amongst uh, film festivals. And um, I, I guess you would think the same thing, but I, I do, I think it's really unique. And I wonder what it is about slam dance that makes it different from other film festivals from your perspective. I know what it is from my perspective, but I wonder from your perspective. Well, I, I think first and foremost, we're an artist led organization. So, you know, you're speaking to one person here today that, you know, has, has been running it since the, since the beginning, but, but I'm one of many that take part in the programming of this festival. And like everybody else, I have one vote. Uh, I don't have any other um, power. I don't have any less power than that. So all the filmmakers that come to the festival are invited back to participate and to help create them the next festival. And so one of the reasons why I, I really wanted that to happen is because in England, I didn't know, I, I didn't know people in the film industry. I was not connected to it. And, you know, coming from, you know, the countryside here, I felt, you know, I felt like an outsider. I didn't have any connections. I just started to do my own thing. And then I was connected with like-minded artists who, you know, would read that face magazine and would be experimenting and trying out new, new, new things like that. It was very exciting. And I thought, you know, naively when I came to the States that, oh, great, it's the American, it's the American dream. Everyone is going to be treated in the, in the same way. Everyone's going to be given the fair shot. I really believe that. But then I soon found out that that's not the case. And, you know, I, 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 I have a lot of respect for Sundance, so please don't, you know, take this the wrong way. But I felt also uh, when we submitted our film and we got the rejection from Sundance, it was, a, it was an example of how difficult and impossible it really was um, for some filmmakers who weren't known um, to be seen, to be heard, to have a showcase. And so after the first Sundance and continued, I wanted to make sure that the artists themselves could decide the program because I thought, well, who better in the end than, you know, your, your, your peers to decide the, the, the stand arts program where every, you know, where we try to create a level playing field for all of those, all of those filmmakers. And this is where, you know, I've got to say, given the sort of current climate that we're in here right now and what we've been discussing here a great deal in this office right now with our programmers um, is that, we believe naturally that the programming team that we would create would reflect the world in which we live. It would really sort of represent the types of filmmakers and the people that would make up the, the, you know, the programmers at Standards. Um, in the end, we would have a program that would reflect the world we lived in. And we wanted to do this in a natural way. We didn't want to force this. And um, we, we've, but we're not beating ourselves up. We've done pretty well at that. But, you know, I've got to say that, you know, it, it, it hasn't entirely succeeded. You know, I think that it, it's, it's something that we've really been looking at the last few years in terms of making sure that sort of, you know, do we, you know, do we have that true reflection of the, of the world? And we don't. And that's one of the reasons why, as you know, we wanted to begin Sound Arts Miami. We wanted to start focusing on filmmakers who, a bit like me, when I came here, I was in England, were trying to get their work seen, you know, give them, give, give them a, a fair shot. And because of what we've accomplished in the United States with standards, we thought that what we could do here is we could start bringing in filmmakers from, you know, from, from the other parts of the Americas and showcase them here. That's the goal with standards Miami, to do that. So that's very exciting. At the moment, we can't do that because of, you know, because of COVID. 
but it's been a really interesting social experiment in how we program at Slam Dance. Uh, it's, it's certainly not, you know, it's not a utopian, it's not a utopian organization, but we really try, you know, and we've always, we've always tried. And I think right now we've got to try harder. Uh, and I'm excited about, I'm excited about that. And um, I'm excited about this moment in time of, of change and culturally for us. And the other thing too, Joanne, this is very important here, I think, is that we're part of the problem. You know, I think that we could have done more. I mean, I think that this idea of a level playing field and inviting artists who've been at Slam Arts to come back to create this sort of level playing field, you know, it, it's, it's been good, it's been positive. But we could have done more on reaching out to other arts organizations. It's only recently where I've been hammering BAFTA and been writing to Ampass and, and looking at ourselves more closely as well. So, uh, I, I, you know, I think that there's some regret there, but there's also excitement about what we can now do because we, we, we have grown in stature and, and, and more people will listen to us. Back in 1995, not many people listened to That's us. That's right. <laughs> um, but now, you know, through the work that we've done, uh, we've been able to get to that point now where we have some, I think, sort of influence amongst all of the filmmakers that have come through stand arts. And now some of the filmmakers are quite big and so they can also help us in that regard as well. It's, uh, it's so true, Peter. I know that I've, I've really discovered this in my own career that if I want to work with um, people from various communities, minority communities, or, but then I have to go there and bring them. It's just, it's just something that has become very, very clear to me. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've, that's been my practice for a long time. Yeah, um, no, so no, this, yeah, yeah. this uh, curation and selection process that you're talking about, where you have all the filmmakers who've been in Slam Lands before, are the programmers, so essentially. The pro Is there another festival anywhere that uses that model? Well, we always thought there were many other festivals like us that, that sort of chose all of their films from the submissions that they are asking filmmakers to send into them. And, uh, you know, again, we're kind of naive because there are actually very few festivals that operate like that 100%, many festivals. And this is something I always try and sort of let filmmakers know because it's very expensive to submit to, uh, to, to, to film festivals. And, um, you know, what happens at a lot of film festivals is really sort of very, it's a very unappealing side here of the film festival world. But what happens is that you, you submit your film, you're asked to do that on a deadline, you pay your fee, and you then think that, okay, so say the festival has a hundred slots, right? They're filling with films that, um, and they get all of these submissions that, that are coming into them in this, in this formal way. They're going to choose all their films from that, from that lot. Well, that's not true. What happens is a lot of time with film festivals is that they are inviting films uh, from in other ways directly through maybe managers, agents, through directors that they know or they've seen at other film festivals. So sometimes what happens is that when the program has come to the submission, the official submission pool, uh, what's, you know, there's not a lot of slots left. Um, it really has, uh, you know, really has altered the, uh, the percentage here. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, we found out really dramatic, really quite dramatic. So at Sundance, all of our films come from the official submissions. We invite no other, no film is invited outside of that. Uh, that's really, really important to us because again, it's part of this level playing field that we've been trying to you know, provide filmmakers. Again, sort of treating filmmakers in the way that we would like to be treated as filmmakers. So that's, that's different. And of course, I've spoken about the programming makeup as well. And that's, you know, that's different. So we're just beginning the programming process right now for our January event. And we have now over 200 programs signed up. Our programming meetings begin next week where we will talk through the, se the upcoming season, uh, share information, uh, just walk through uh, uh, and talk through uh, within each of the programming teams because we have different teams for you know we have a team for the documentary features we have a team for narrative shorts we have a team for experimental and animation and narrative features and so, 
So we will connect with all of those teams and we'll just walk through the, the process concerns that we have, ideas that we've been sharing that have coming to pass this year in terms of development of the program. So that setup is quite, is, is quite different from other festivals. There's very few other festivals that operate, op operate like that in an artist led way. Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely um, essential. And you know, what I find is that uh, most filmmakers are, are really obsessed with, with festivals and getting their films in festivals and that's fine. But the thing that really I think is important is as you know, my work is about Filmmakers. I'm interested in developing filmmakers and what I realize, and this is not necessarily a criticism, but most film festivals, that is not their goal. And so what I want filmmakers to understand is that the goal of a film festival is to build audiences and they're, they're serving audiences. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not there to serve filmmakers. They're there to serve audiences. And for some reason, I thought of this this morning for the first time, but, um, I'm half Trinidadian and in Trinidad, we have a big carnival. You know, there's a million people show up to this tiny island to carnival. And in Trinidad, carnival is not a spectator sport. You go to carnival to be in carnival. You don't go to watch carnival, which is the way that it is in most other places. Mm -hmm. And so I just suddenly had this realization. I'm like, oh, well, this is what slam dance is like. You know, you. Is slam dance is an experience for filmmakers to participate. And so even the filmmakers who don't necessarily have a film in slam dance, I feel as though when they come there, they're being give, given an artist development experience. Yeah. Can you say uh, a bit about that, yeah. how, you, how you make that happen? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly what it's like because, you know, it, it's, you know, it's run by filmmakers for filmmakers. So a lot of the programmers so filmmakers turn up and support the filmmakers during the, during the event. Yeah. And they help mentor those filmmakers also after the festival. So we're not just one festival, you know, for seven days and then we go away. We're very much a year round organization supporting, you know, supporting filmmakers. And, and you know, and this, include, this also includes writers as well. We have quite a big writing competition for emerging writers. So it's really important that we connect and we have that shared experience and we all join in. And, um, you know, one of the, it's, a, it's, it's kind of an awkward experience to begin with, but one of the things we do to sort of break the ice, to sort of show people that, you know, when we talk about the power of our community, we, we uh, you know, some people just think, well, everyone says that, you know, everyone says that they have a community. Yes. Um, but, you know, what we do at Slam Dance to sort of demonstrate that is that not just, you know, we have a lot of preparation for our filmmakers coming into the festival in, in terms of like helping them guide PR and pub publicity, how to present the film. And this is not just for Slam Dance, this is also afterward as well. So they're taking away that experience, they can convert it into other festival experiences that they have. For a lot of filmmakers, it's the first time they've been to, the first time they've shown the film, and for some, it's the first time they've ever been to a film festival, or it's the first time they've been to a festival from in the United States. They've traveled from China or wherever they, wherever else they have from around the, the world and the difficult circumstances to, you know, to get there. But we have this filmmaker lineup that the, that the DGA is, is part of, and where we very simply, we all introduce one another, you know, uh, and, you know, you, you, I thought you were going into a sort of deep thought situation there with you, with uh, with the, uh, the 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 festival in Trin Trinidad, I, and I thought you were going to sort of say that you know in other parts of Europe it's not like that, and then maybe we'll sort of go into the whole idea of Western civ what is you know what is civilization, right? Yes, Western civilization. civilization versus other forms of civilization, <laughs> but our, ours is a crazy, um, heartwarming and genuine um, civilization community where we really want to welcome everyone and get everyone together so that we can start sharing, you know, what we've created. And so all of the filmmakers, you know, they, they stand up awkwardly and, and introduce themselves and tell, uh, tell us a little bit about their film, why they're at Slam Dance, and it really helps bring everyone together. And that's what the festival is all about. I mean, we are big in one way, but as Sandy knows very well, our location in Park City, and as you know, Joanne, is really quite small. It's, you know, it's intimate. We're very close together. Um, and that really has created a, 
you know, I think a wonderful environment where filmmakers can share their experiences. Um, it helps really foster a very um, positive filmmaking environment and it attracts uh, the industry, it attracts the press. They love that. Mm -hmm. uh, they, that's something that they also uh, wish they could be around more often. Oh. So it also rubs off on them in terms of uh, attracting, um, you know, the, the industry to, to the press and the industry to, you know, to the festival. It is not the greatest cinematic viewing experience. You know, when we put the arc light, which we have ongoing screenings with, you know, up against what we have in Park City, it's sort of, it's very different, but it works. And um, that's why we're still in, in, that's why we're still in Park City. We'll see if we're going to be in Park City in January. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. Um, I'm just sort of considering which which direction to go here. Um, so Slam Dance is expanding dramatically, and you have a lot more going on than the one event in January, which would probably be enough for kind of a full time gig, right? So now you have all these other uh, things going on. So right now, I think the deadlines are still open for the screenplay. Festival, right. Yeah, we, we close up in close up in July. On that. In July, so and that's for shorts and features. Is that right, or is it just pilots? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and pilots. Okay. Um, yeah. Somebody on the call, one of my clients, told me that they've applied on, for the pilot, so that's cool. Um, and then what comes next? And then of course everything's changed because of coronavirus. So what's coming next on your? Well, um, probably like everyone that we're, that we're on the call, call with today, uh, we're, we're all, you know, 101 is like we're trying to keep it all together, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been very fortunate here, uh, and it's been really rough on a lot of festivals, but we were very fortunate to have a festival in January when we did. And we've been able to maneuver from that and go into our screenplay competition, which you know is is is, is largely online in terms of how we you know, interact with 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 entrants. Um, so we've been fortunate there, and and as well as then prepping uh, what we hope to be physical events, uh, not least a, a a repurposing of of Slamouts Miami later on. Um, and as well as our January festival, we've been very much focusing on our digital um, initiatives. So we had begun to um, at the end of last year. And right now, if you went to our website, you'll see that we are helping to release a Slam Nuts film called Beats, uh, which was directed by Brian Welsh and um, exec produced by Steven Soderbergh. And so we've, we've, we've done a Q&A to go along with that release. And we're working with other theaters, the Music Box in, in Chicago and other theaters to release that film right now through what we're calling sort of virtual, you know, a virtual distribution event experience. Uh, we're going to be doing another one of those films, which we're going to be announcing quite soon um, later on toward, toward the end of the summer. But the other initiative that we've been working on is um, we um, are beginning a a shorts channel and um, we've been collaborating with YouTube on having a showcase for short films. Um, we really value short filmmaking very much at Slamdance as much as the features because of course a lot of the times from short films you know come these great filmmakers who go on to really shape the um, the world of you know the, the entertainment industry. And we've had a number of those, great number of those filmmakers that have done that through Slam Dance. So we wanted to then develop a um, Slam Dance channel. And we've collaborated with YouTube on this. We're actually launching this Sunday and we're going to be premiering a short film a week. Nearly all of the films that we have to begin with, the first 24 are, are, are coming out of Slam Dance. Um, they've been made by alumni um, that some of these films haven't been seen before but uh, nearly, nearly all of them actually have come out of, come out of the festival. 
And it's another way that we can uh, support our filmmakers. And it's another way that we can support um, short filmmaking. And um, it's interesting, probably a lot of people out there uh, tuned into We As One, which Tribeca helped organize with a number of other film festivals. We weren't part of that, but we thought it was a really good, uh, we really, we thought that was a really great development. But where we're looking at it at this is sort of more of a 24 seven experience. I think that it's, it's been rough on festivals where they've had to convert totally to going online. Um, and so much effort goes into that for seven days and then that whole effort then disappears. It doesn't live on afterwards, it's gone. Right. So we've been looking at it the other way of how to sort of grow our festival, um, you know, like this 24 seven. And we think this, the Stand Arts Channel is a really good way to do that for short films. Um, wh what about uh, some of the other initiatives that you've been working on really to do with expanding out the, the mentorship side of, of Slam Dance? Are you still working on all of that? Yeah, very, you know, very much so. And, and sort of this, um, I don't know how many um, are at film school at the moment or have just recently graduated from film school, but I'll just be really just straight up about this if you, if, if you, <laughs> if you don't mind. If it comes across as blunt and uh, I'm, I, you know, uh, apologies, but- Be blunt, we're British. Uh, we, we really believe in, we really believe in lower costs. Uh, film education at, at Slam Dance. Uh, I, I, we don't have to go into the details of that. I think if we just look at the world that we're around right now, I think that's come to the fore in, 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 in our conscious, consciousness more and more. Uh, but we, we've always felt that that was a, a very important next step for Slam Dance to go underneath the submissions that we have and try and see how we could help filmmakers that would one day potentially submit to Slam Dance. And so we started a few years ago, this Polytechnic program, which we have at the festival, which is completely free, where we bring in industry members, and they talk about various subjects, the practical side of filmmaking, which I think oftentimes is not taught at film school. So it's something which we felt that we could really um, supplement and add in to the film school experience. But you see the other thing too, the other obvious one, I'm not gonna name the, uh, the film school. It's a very, very well-known film school. So it happened just under five years ago and it really pinpointed why this is really important for us to one day when we had the means to really um, focus and to put attention on this. But it was a very big film school and it was a film school where um, I felt I, were going, I, were going, I was going to go into this room, this class, which I helped teach. And I was, going to, I, I was really going to see uh, a broad range of, of, of filmmakers of all color. Um, and I walked into this place, into this room, and there were, there were two people of color and one was the professor. There were, the, the, there were about 50-50 women, 50-50 women and men. So, but, but, but it was like, this is a privileged situation. And as much as I was reading about how this institution was supporting filmmakers, I couldn't go away believing that that was the case. So that got me really thinking about, okay, so we really, there's only so much we can do at Slam Dance, but this is an area where we've really got to sort of try and support somehow. So the Russo Fellowship, which started three years ago, is kind of a blueprint, if you like, um, of a grants and mentorship program that we're beginning at Slam Dance. And what Joe and Anthony are doing is that they give a very nice prize for $25,000 to a filmmaker and mentorship um, for their next project. And, um, but the grants and mentorship program is uh, an extension of that where we want to help filmmakers really uh, through education, through mentorship, through our alumni uh, group that we have here and through grants like the one that Joe and Anthony do of help those filmmakers who, you know, might find it really difficult to get into a place like that institution that I taught at. Now that's changing, we know, right? Um, but there, it, it's, still, it's still not there. Uh, and I think Slam Arts can play a part in trying to um, support, um, you know, filmmakers from socially economic, 
backgrounds where it makes it very, very challenging, if not impossible, for them to be able to go to a, you know, a great, to get a great film school education. We can, we can play a part there. And um, before I open it up for questions, I, my last question to you is, how do you balance all of this with being a filmmaker? Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good question. So I really try and um, uh, edit <laughs> and keep things simple. I, you know, I don't like, I, I don't like, I, I, I try and sort of keep the, the, the drama out of things. We have a great, we have a great team at Slam Dance and um, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't been easy, but I've, um, but it, it's, um, you know, you learn how to do that. And, um, you know, like, like all of us, when we are writing a screenplay and we're creating, we put all of ours into, you know, our, our efforts. And so it is, so it is here as well. But um, it is a it, it is it is a balance, and uh, but my my simple uh, view is that I, I do you um do you create that balance by carving out specific time, or what what are some of the things that you've learned to do to be able to keep both of those things going? I do, yeah. So I, I try. I have a I look I look at I look at the week, and I always um, I, I I always. There's, some, there's something, uh, there's something that, that, that's, that's obviously in me where, you know, I, I want to help then other filmmakers and I found a group of other people at Slam Arts that want to do the same thing. Yes. But there's also a part of me that wants to spend some time here for myself, you know, creating. And, um, and so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a balance. And um, sometimes there may be a little bit more of the, uh, of, of my own, working on my own work, Sometimes it will be, it's been a lot, it has been a lot on the standout side of things, but I, I, I try and find that balance. But you know, the thing, the thing about it for everybody here, it's about finding something that you really want to do. And it doesn't have to be that one thing. If it all adds up to that, you know, who, to who you are, who, what makes you work, um, and you're happy doing it, keep on doing it. And, um, you know, I've, 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 I, found, I found that and I'm very, you know, I'm, I, I'm very, I'm very fortunate in, it, in you know, in, in that, but um, it is about finding that balance of what you really want to do, you know, creatively. And for me, uh, part of creating is also to help support the creativity of, of others. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, let's open it up for some questions. And as always, I, I, don't, I ignore the chat because I can't keep up with it. So just physically raise your hand if you have a question or, or digitally raise your hand if you have a question. Ali, go ahead. Hi, uh, Joanne. Thank you for setting all this up. And uh, uh, thank you, Peter, for uh, taking the time. I like your uh, painting behind you. Um, I wanted to ask a question regarding slam dance. Um, if a film uh, has some sort of like distribution deal in place or it's in the process of, um, uh, you know, getting a deal, um, is, is that something that affects, um, you know, a consideration for, for slam dance spe specifically? So, hi, Ali. Yeah, if, if, um, if a film already has distribution uh, by the time the festival comes around, um, then it most likely, it, it, will, it most likely won't play at, it most likely won't play at Slam Dance. But if the filmmaker um, smartly has gone about trying to attract distributors to their work because it's got into a festival like Slam Dance, but nothing has been announced, um, and maybe the deal is in the works, um, great, you know, leverage the film festival to help, you know, get distribution. Um, but, you know, if, if when entering the festival, you are saying your film's already got distribution in the United States, the place where the film is going to play at Sundance, then it, this is great. You, you've succeeded on many levels already. Uh, what, we don't have many rules at Sundance, but that's one of them. 
And the reason being is that we would much rather than help another filmmaker that hasn't got that distribution, hasn't been able to accomplish that great goal. Um, so that's, 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 that, that's, how, that's how it works here. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Isabel, I, I can't see you, but I see your hand raised. I'm, I'm in the car, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm doing my, doing my mom thing. Um, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Don't um, get anything or you'll be in trouble. Oh, I won't. I'm going to pull over right now. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much, uh, Peter, and thank you so much, Joanne. Uh, this was so fun um, to, to learn about um, your story of, of how you came up with um, Slam Dance and, and maintaining a, a life of a filmmaker. So I, I wanted to know. Um, I have a friend who was in the Latin Grammys in business development, and I'm just guessing that it's a similar process of how a film festival um, finances itself. Is it like basically sponsors and that kind of like, how, do, how does it, how does that work? Yeah. So um, the sort of modeling of a film festival is we receive submission fees. And we use those submission fees to help pay for the overhead of our office, which is year round. And then we also use those submission fees to pay for bills, our expenses in Park City. Park City is a very expensive place. I bet. Um, we do get a lot of submissions. It's because of our submissions that we're able to do all the things that we do year round for the, film, for the, for the filmmakers. Um, we also have a screenplay competition where we also receive submission fees for that, but we pay our readers to, uh, to read those screenplays and to give feedback on that. There is a profit from that. We also give prizes out of that profit to the winners. So um, that's how our submission fees work as a sort of a line item. And then also on top of that, we have sponsorship and advertising. So right now we're very concerned about sponsorship and advertising because like everybody else, we're concerned about where our income may come, come from in the next few months because there's a great deal of uncertainty. And we know a lot of our sponsors are very concerned about their businesses right now, but sponsorship is also a line item of income for us. Merchandise is another, and so a ticket and pass sales as well. So there's some licensing sometimes involved. Um, we've just become a nonprofit and so there'll be a for-profit entity at Slamdance. So when I talk about license fees, they are now a for-profit um, line item, where, for example, like the film that we're helping distribute, that Beats film, which I mentioned. So um, we would receive fees, maybe a box office share or a license fee from a distribution agreement that's been made, um, where we'd share with the filmmaker, but also Slamdance would participate in, participate in that. So does that help answer? Yes, that's very, it's very interesting to me because I, I live in, in Miami right now. I just moved back because I grew up here, but I've lived for 15 years out of the country. I lived for a year in London, seven in Paris and seven in, in Chile. And in, and in my experience, I think it's so wild that, I mean, you know, in France, of course, they've got plenty of their own, but in South America, they're very focused on Europe uh, mostly for film festival festivals. And I think it would be more, make more sense to, I think Miami's like really a port of entry that makes sense. And so when you mentioned, and Joanne mentioned that, I think that's really cool. And I just wanted to say that I'd love to be part of it to help you or to oh, volunteer when Great. that happens. Yeah, thank you Isabel, appreciate it. Okay. Thank yeah, you thank Isabel. Um, Pete Kevin, I saw his hand raised. I'm not seeing you on the screen there, so. Can you hear me okay? Um, yes, we can hear you. So Peter, uh, Kevin Pontuti from University of the Pacific. Um, we, I have a film that- Actually, can you speak up, Kevin? We're not Peter. hearing you terribly well. Sorry, um, how about she's now better? Not really, but, but just speak up. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, that's way better. Okay, that's, uh, my, my apologies. Um, Peter, uh, Kevin Pontuti here from University of the Pacific. Um, we met, uh, I don't know, six months ago on a call. Um, and I just, you know, want to say, first of all, like, love the mission and what you guys are doing at Slam Dance and the, and the whole story and mantra, you know, um, that, that you've talked about. 
One question, um, we're finishing up post on a feature and trying to figure out timeline for festivals, distribution, that sort of thing. With, um, is it, do you think it's smarter to submit early, to submit late? Um, what, you know, I know that there's probably a lot of talk about like, is it gonna be a virtual fest, in person, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. And just kind of wondering uh, thoughts on, uh, you know, get it in early, hold back a bit, that sort of thing. Mm. I, I think the, the, the short answer to your question is you submit your film when it is finished. So um, it may not actually even in the end be uh, fit in with the stand down schedule of things. But I think, you know, that's the one thing I really know for sure over the years in sort of saying that really, that, that uh, answering that really sort of, you know, firmly is that there have been too many occasions where films have been submitted to us and they're just not ready. We do accept works in progress um, and that can mean all kinds of things uh, to, different, to different people. But I think very often, uh, like I was discussing last night with the program, we have this amazing film that's just been entered to us, which is two hours long. And it's so obvious to three people already that it's 30 minutes too long. And if we could just get in there and help cut that, you know, with the filmmaker, it's great. We'll probably program it. Um, but, it, it, you know, I doubt whether that film will, will, will get in right now because it's, it's, it, it's too long. Um, and maybe the filmmaker in time will, 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 will realize that. We know the filmmaker, actually, because we had a short of theirs at the festival. So uh, we can't tell the filmmaker that we, we feel as though that it's too long unless they ask you know, for us advice, but it's an example sometimes of how, you know, very often one of the issues is that, you know, we've all gone through this where we've realized, but we're getting feedback on our work, oh, it's too long, it needs to be shorter. And everyone is, you know, everyone in this room saying the same thing, well, why don't we see this? And it just goes to show you that, you know, um, you've really got to be very, I think, um, very careful in making sure your film is, is finished having screenings with, uh, with not just friends and family, but with, with people you don't know. I, I may always draw upon Chris Nolan's um, sort of path with finishing his film. He always will show his film. He's always done this. Warners don't like it, but he's always shown films to people that he doesn't know as he's finishing his film to get feedback. Feedback for his editor, feedback for himself, feedback for the writer, and they will take notes on that and they will change the, change the movie. So if, if Steven Soderbergh is still doing that, then well, it just goes to show you then that it's probably a good idea, no matter who you are, that, that you take stock and take a pause and a beat and really look at the film that you think is finished uh, to make sure that it, it really is so that when it goes out there in the world, when it goes out there to film festivals, you're giving yourself the very best, the, the very best chance. So I, I think that that's why you know you you submit it when it's finished. If you really know that it is finished, usually submitting it early on is a you know is a is is, is a good idea. Leaving it right until the end for festivals is usually not such a good idea because everyone is so busy watching films, and possibly a film might not get the kind of deeper look that it would have done at the beginning, but. Um, but anyway, that's that's what I that's that's how I that's what I have to say about that one, Kevin. Thank you. That's very very helpful. I appreciate it. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Juliet, you're up next. Hey. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Joanne. Hi, Peter. Hi. Um, nice to meet you. I wanted to speak about uh, basically, you know, um, the climate of of what's going on in the world today, um, and if there is any opportunities or. Uh, events that go on at slam dance uh that include uh uh specifically for diversity uh women of color um uh people with disabilities uh, can you talk more on that yeah yeah how'd you do um well I, I mentioned earlier on about how we got started and what i you know what i wanted to see in terms of how our artist that organization would reflect the world that we live in. And I sort of, you know, being, we, we've, we, we've done okay, but we, we haven't, 
we're, we're not there where we, where, where we need to be. Uh, and it's not just about the filmmakers that we're programming, it's also about our programmers that we've had at the festival before as well. And um, that's something that we, you know, that we've been looking at obviously a lot recently, but also over the last, you know, several years. And I'm not saying that, you know, while we can sort of say that we're okay, good in comparison with others, that, that's, not, that's not the point. We need to, we need to do more. Um, but um, we do. Um, actually, Joanne was at an event that we helped support in, in, uh, at Sundance this year, where we had, a, I thought it was a really great gathering, where we um, hosted um, directors from other festivals involving people of color, where we, where we were able to create this space for them to gather in Park City and to unite and come together and share their experiences with what, with, with what is happening at their individual festival. I love that because it was a, an example of not just how we can support um, filmmakers of color, but also how we can help support in a very simple way, um, how we also can support those directors of festivals that really want to do more as well. And by getting everyone together in a physical space like we did, I really enjoyed that. That was one of my highlights, actually, of the festival because it was done impromptu. It was done very, you know, very quickly. It had great energy about it. There was an urgency to it, and um, you know, and I, I'd like to see us continue to do events like that as well. So, which encourages then? Um, yeah, that that well, really was one of that was one of my all-time highlights, Peter, of uh, being in that uh, group of uh, programmers of color. And I'm still part of that group, and it was it was um, very much. It felt to me very much the flavor of Sunda Slam Dance. You know, uh, the the last event that I got to go to because I was only there for a short while was um, an event you do every year, which is where uh, we were all in this big long line outside, and uh, all the filmmakers, and then we went into a room, and there were a whole bunch of um, festival programmers in there. And, and filmmakers got to speak to festival programmers. And I was like, I have never seen that in my life. Mm -hmm. And you do it every year. Yeah. Um, I actually, uh, Joanne had um, helped me uh, last year to put together a, a great proposal I, I, that Joanne was able to um, help me get around for disability inclusion. And if it's something that you would be interested in taking a look at, Peter, I would love to send that over to you. Sure. Yeah. 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 Please, please do. Yeah, yeah. I have a great idea for um, just having a panel for disability inclusion uh, uh, for just dis uh, di people, disabled people that are filmmakers or actors or um, just films about disability yeah. or have a, a, a narrative in it. And yeah. so I just thought it would be a, a great idea because it's something that I had never seen at a festival yet being a person that is disabled i am at film festivals i'm like i don't feel that type of diversity i would feel all the other diversities but that would seem to be not there you know yeah great i i, I would like to see that and, and maybe you've seen this film already but just quickly have you have you come across a film called roll with me have you heard of this film um yes I didn't get to watch that though. Yeah. I did watch um, Give Me Liberty, which also uh -huh. has um, a great actress in it, Lolo. Uh, what is Lolo's last name? I forgot right now. But she um, is, is in a wheelchair and she's amazing in it. It just did really great. I think it it was uh, at the Independent Film Festival or something in New York and I think Tribeca. So yeah, I just watched that on Amazon and I'm, I'm good friends with her. She's actually someone that I've already reached out to about being on this panel as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, we, 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 we actually showed Roll With Me um, at, at the festival and um, the hotel was a little bit concerned, but they, we got it together. We were able to, even on a hill, get a, a great number of people in wheelchairs into the Treasure Mountain Inn uh, and wow. uh, to, see, to see this film. So we are, you know, we are accessible even in that, even in that, even even in that, even in that mountain. So that's something that, when I say yes, it's also something I know that we can actually do 
because of that, that screening in and unto itself, which attracted a lot of people with disability and, 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 in, and, in, and in wheelchairs. So, um, but yeah, please send it to me. Okay, thank you. And now I need to, our time has uh, come to an end, so I, I don't want to keep uh, Peter too long. I, I know, sorry everybody about the, um, about the, the technical difficulties at the beginning, but this was so awesome and um, uh, just wonderful to hear from you, Peter, and it's just, it's been too long. We have to catch up ourselves. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Thank, thanks for asking me on, Joanne. I'm, I'm sure it's all my fault in connecting this morning, and uh, I hope everyone stays well. And and, um, and and thank you, Joanne. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Bye. 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 Cheers. Bye. 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 So, um, everybody, thank you for uh, being here and for um, uh, listening. I keep having this experience of each time that I finish up with a guest and I'm like, okay, time for questions. And I think everybody's going to like rush in, you know, and uh, that's not what happens. <laughs> I don't quite know what, what is going on, but um, I love it when you all ask questions. Um, so uh, I'm going to put my um, calendar link in the chat here. Uh, it was so great to have so many of my clients on today from all over. And um, I work one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, filmmakers. Uh, I, when I worked with Slam Dance on uh, Miami Slam Dance, that was actually the first time in a long time that I had taken on a client that was not an individual. Uh, but we um, we were uh, looking at creating this new project in Miami, and uh, with the festival, same way as I do with my clients. Really, the focus is on fundraising you know where's the money where are we going to get the money to make this film is usually what i'm what i'm working on so if you would be interested in talking to me about working with me um that would be great and just uh, book a filmmaker success breakthrough session in my calendar and um i don't have to rush off for the next few minutes does anybody have a a, a question that they didn't get to ask maybe i can answer it Total, like, no, everybody knows, everybody knows everything that they need to know. <laughs> I mean, everything is so thorough. You know, it's, it's like so much information to take in. And I think that Andrina, we... Andrina, I think you have to unmute yourself. Andrina. So if, you want to, if you want to finish what you were saying, Juliet, you can go ahead. I can go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was just saying that, I mean, we just got so much great information. I think we're all processing it like wow that was great info and then we you know like i know i'll probably get off the phone and go oh i should have asked that you know or i should have to reach out to joanne so it's a little slow at, right afterwards i think <laughs> yeah 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 i i see everybody's processing information yeah did you have a question andrena yeah i just wanted to have like maybe just uh if you could give us some input on your thoughts on um like what is going on with film festivals and you know, over this period of time, you know, how do you see all well, of that kind of evolving? The, the, the most profound thing to me, I, I'm, I'm, I don't look at things in an, I, I, I do my best to not look at things in an abstract level. I'm looking, I always look at things in a concrete, practical level. And the most uh, important thing that uh, Peter said uh, in, in regards to that question was, we might be having a festival in January. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so um, we don't know. None of us know anything. None of us know, you know, now there's this big push for people to, to not wear masks. I mean, there's like a, a level of insanity going on that uh, is really difficult for me to understand. But, you know, places are opening up, places are closing back down, places are opening up, places, so nobody knows anything. And I don't think it's possible to answer a question like that. But festivals are uh, working to cope with the situation. The thing that I really feel as though 
it's important for me to introduce you all to slam dance as being a really different experience from a festival is that this festival is for filmmakers. Most film festivals are not. And this, I don't know how else to say it. I'm, I'm not saying this as being some sort of criticism of film festivals. It's just that that's not what they're in the business of doing. They're not in the business of helping filmmakers. They're in the business of building audiences, but they're not in the business of helping filmmakers. So the difference when you walk into slam dance is, is from the second you walk in, it, you, you feel the difference. And it's a place for filmmakers and it's a place for filmmakers to learn, to grow, to build as, as filmmakers. That's what it's for. And everything they do is geared towards that. And as, as Peter said, you know, the viewing experience isn't, isn't that great. The viewing of the films isn't that great. But, um, you know, I mean, I remember years ago when I was running a cinema, we had Kenneth Anger come, uh, you, you know, look up Kenneth Anger and see who Kenneth Anger is. He's one of two experimental filmmakers who are on the, uh, you know, top 100 filmmakers of all time by the American Film Institute or the British Film Institute or something like that. So, you know, I ran this little cinema in Miami Beach, the Alliance Cinema, and we had a, a little one screen and, you know, and Kenneth Anger came and we were showing some of his films, uh, which are mostly shorts, by the way, you know, Peter was talking about the importance of short films. And, um, you know, we started the projection and the sound wasn't on and, and you know, we were all freaking out. We're like, oh my God, we've got Kenneth Anger in the cinema and there's no sound. You know, and we stopped it and we started again, you know, and um, so uh, all of those things, when, you, when you're working in a cinema or a festival, you know, you think, you, we're thinking a lot about projection and, and those kind of things. But, you know, when, when the San Francisco Film Festival happens every year, they, now they have a few screenings at the Dolby Theater on Market Street. And the Dolby Theater is not open to the public. It's only for professionals. And so once a year, there are public screenings at the Dolby Theater and I go to all of them. I don't care what the movie is, just to have that experience. But let me tell you, that is not what Slam Dance is about. Slam Dance is about developing filmmakers. So I really want to underscore that, you know, I, I talk to filmmakers all day long, and most of them, their one focus is getting into film festivals. And they just don't understand that that's not really uh, a thing, unless it's some very, very special film festivals. Uh, Slam Dance is one, one, the American Black Film Festival is another, and then there are some film festivals that have great programs for filmmakers, but they're few and far between. In, Slam Dance and ABFF are special in that everything in the festival is for filmmakers and it's for talent development and professional development of filmmakers. Everything is geared towards that. Hey, Joanne, do you think that wasn't uh, an answer to your question? But <laughs> go ahead, Ali. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was. Oh, I was just going to add. Do you think that they would ever go to do something virtual? If this takes another year of this? Oh, yeah, they will. Yeah, they'll do something. I mean, that's what he was saying, that this Sunday, they're starting um, a project which was, you know, pre-coronavirus was in the works, which is uh, in partnership with YouTube and having a slam dance channel, and they're going to focus on a short a week. So there's, there's digital programming for sure. Yeah, it's the meeting in person that's in question. Ali? Hi. Uh, uh, it's awesome to know, too, that you were involved in helping uh, with the Slam Dance Miami. I actually didn't know that, so that's, that's really cool. Um, do you see Slam Dance expanding to other regions or cities, or are, are we just starting to so see how with Miami, how it works out, and maybe expanding after that? Well, um, it's not really that Slam Dance is looking to franchise itself. That's not really the goal. Uh, the goal was really about how do we broaden the um, 
level of cultural diversity it, at slam dance, you know? How do we do that? Because the intention is there, but then how do we actually do it? So now we're going to go to the place where we can find those filmmakers. So Miami is a place where we can find filmmakers who are not only, it's a very diverse, you know, I don't know if you know, but Miami, uh, certainly by the time I left, was 51% uh, Spanish speaking, for example. It's an incredibly diverse city in a very different way than maybe LA, which is where uh, Peter is based, or San Francisco, where I'm based. Um, but, um, so it's already diverse, but then the, the festival is open to filmmakers from the Caribbean and from Latin America. So it's a way of using Miami as a hub to, to reach out and you know, bring in a very different set of, of diverse filmmakers. And it, they're just doing, as I said, the thing that I, I learned you know, a long time ago. If you, if you want to create diversity, you have to go and get it. You can't just sit there and say, I, I welcome everybody. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I can imagine, you know, down the road that, that Slam Dance might say, let's go and, uh, let's go and have um, a film festival in Africa. I could see that because what they're doing is outreach for diversity. Yes, the so Miami was just like a good place. Plus Sandy said, come on down. <laughs> You know, which was which was very helpful. Any other questions before we go? So good to see. Oh, who is that? Mark. Hi. Oh, not Mark. Who? Uh, I'm not seeing everybody's faces. Who just asked a question? Uh, Joanne, it's me, Isabel. For if if there is a. Um... If Mark, you're, if, let me go with Mark because you already had a question before. Let me go with Mark. Sorry, uh, I'll come back to you. Well, I, I just want to say that I, I really uh, love this. I was listening in because I, uh, I was having trouble getting in on, on the online, but that, it was really great. I love the, this, this concept in your delineating for us clearly that the, the festivals are for audiences, not so much for filmmakers. And um, um, sorry. Uh, at any rate, I really appreciate your your bringing this to our attention. It was really enlightening. Thank you, Mark. It's it's um, it's hard because I love film festivals. You know, it's it's not that. But my work is professional development of filmmakers. So. Um, I just see it from a certain perspective, which is everybody only has so much energy, time, attention, money, you know, where do we put that time and attention? And, and you know, what I find is most, most filmmakers, 100% of their attention is on film festivals. So I would just like a little bit of that focus to change, you know, and just be aware that, um, you know, there, there are, there are differences, there are variances, there are variations, there are specifics about film festivals that it's idea to know. Well, you know? I, I think that this concept that you bring up, which is where's the money? I mean, this equation of, uh, I mean, there's two equations here. One is how do we raise the money? And then the second, to make it, then after you've made it, well, how do you make money back on it? And uh, yeah. And and that I think that's the 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 balance right now is 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 how do how do we do that how do we uh, you know how do we market ourselves and having a film festival that's set up to help you do that is one thing but I think I went to festivals thinking uh, you know uh, that it was going to help me uh, and it it did but it only helped me when I personally met someone and ha formed a relationship with them and, and, and contacted them. But- um, So the networking, the networking yeah. was useful. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, love, 
I love that they're set up for filmmakers and uh, and I my experience has been that it's like thank you very much we sold some tickets here's your prize or sorry you didn't win see you <laughs> next year that's right absolutely that is that is absolutely how usually the filmmakers experience Isabel did you still want to go ahead and ask no, my question was just, um, I mean, about getting in touch with Peter and, and or with you about the, the Miami project, if it happens. Uh, well, we're definitely um, in the process of going through the programming. So we've been receiving submissions and we are in the selection process and just moving forward. But there's no, we haven't announced any kind of date for Miami Slam Dance um, as yet. And those decisions will get me. I'm definitely not making those decisions. <laughs> so as it comes up, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. But I loved that you got on and offered to volunteer and to help out. So I'll definitely put you in touch. Thank you so much. With the powers, with the powers that be. <laughs> Anybody else? Jen? Awesome. Hey, hey Joanne, it's Diane. I was just wondering, do you, um, Hi. yeah, hey. I, yeah, I just, I, I want to second what other people have said. This is just, it was such an amazing conversation and I'd love to hear what you guys are doing with slam dance. It's just, it's so phenomenal. What, what was amazing about the conversation, Diane? Well, I just, I love the fact that from the get go, he's really talking about inclusiveness and and really i mean and obviously he's an artist himself and so that's where he's coming from right. is the fact that that his selection committees are are made up of artists or filmmakers that are you know that are obviously working and and i just and obviously their slam dance is doing so much already but the fact that he's not satisfied and he you know what, right. what you're talking about doing um setting up miami and I, I love your, the piece that you're bringing to this where you're, you know, you're asserting that it, it's like, it's not enough to say that I'm open to doing this. I have to, we have to go and, and actually make it accessible. I mean, actually go where people are as opposed to expecting them to go up into the hills of Utah. You know, I, it's just, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, there's, there's obviously, there's a whole other, <laughs> there's whole other conversations in terms of that, but. Yeah, so I was wondering, like, what other film festivals then do you really champion? And do you feel that because there's there's other film festivals that might be along those lines? Are there any that you? No, I don't present? think so. And and I asked Pete that specific question, and he doesn't know either because it's not the way it is. Right. It's just not the way it is, and um, and so the the standard way that anybody does a film festival is um, that. Some people, this is, this is the way nonprofits work. So you get a, you get a bunch of people together who have money. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is how the nonprofit movement started. You get a bunch of people together who have money and they say, hey, we need a symphony in our town. Why don't we put the money in a, con a conductor and we'll have a symphony, right? So that's how the nonprofit profit movement started really and it started mm -hmm. in the US um, and it's only later you know in maybe the 60s that artists started to get together and say hey why don't we start an organization mm -hmm. but film festivals um, I mean there's a film festival I'm not going to say the name because I don't mean this as a criticism in any way I, as I said I love film festivals and in a, by about their third year they were at a seven million dollar budget Oh, that okay. means that you basically got together a, a lot of rich people who said, let's put some money in and then we'll hire people and we'll create a film festival. Great. Right. But then the, the goal of that film festival is to have wonderful films and lots of celebrities or audiences come. It's not about filmmakers. It's, I don't know how right. to say it any other way. It's not about filmmakers. Yeah, well, that's what's so incredible about listening to your conversation today is that clearly that is truly what this is about, is about yeah. building the community of filmmakers yes. and supporting one another, which is so exciting, you know? So. And, you know, there's no way I've been to, there are something like 3,000 film festivals going at any one time that last for longer than a year, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I've, 
I've had wonderful experiences, but, but when I go to a film festival, I'm looking for the artist development possibilities, mm -hmm. the professional development possibilities, and often they're at all, they're zero. That's, mm -hmm. that's common. So I would say that probably covers about 2,500 of those 3,000 festivals. And then uh, some of them have small artist development possibilities. And, um, and then some really do a good job. So for example, at the Napa Valley Film Festival here, they do a beautiful job of artist development, but you only can participate if you have a film in the festival. Mm -hmm. um, it's not open to other filmmakers, you know? Um, and then, um, as I said, the, the American Black Film Festival is in, very, in certain ways is a very minor film festival, but it's a massive talent development um, project for African-American filmmakers. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, um, and Slam Dance is, is like that. That's, it's the only reason for being is to develop filmmakers. So that is, you know, I mean, I, I didn't even get to one handful of, of festivals. And as I said, I don't know them all by any means. You know, I don't know them all, but. Um, a, a very specific thing. And, and the way, you know, I had been working with Peter for a few months before I realized that that's the way that they program their festival. And I was like, oh, wow. what? <laughs> what so there are 200 programmers you know in the rest of the film festival world oh, wow. you see you got me started on this topic in the rest of the film festival world there are programmers and they program this festival and that festival and this festival and that festival and this festival and that festival and this festival, right so they it's a small community they all talk amongst each other mm -hmm. and they, they you know so that creates this thing as well you know and there was this impromptu meeting that peter had invited me to um last january which is called the program of color and i'm now a uh, part of that it's a 200 collective of programmers of color so you know but it's like so then i hear peter he would do his own self-critique so then now we create the problem of being insular you know but there are right. at least there are 220 of us um and that and it ranges from you know tiny festivals all around the world to you know the biggest festivals uh, includes includes people and so you know uh with with the new level of conversation about diversity and inclusion that's going on i think that you know, hopefully film festivals will hire more people of color to bring in more diverse filmmakers, you know, to their festivals, but um, it's, a, it's challenging. So thank you for, thank for you, uh, hanging out with me for a bit longer. It was, it's very stressful when the tech doesn't work, let me tell you. And I, I, I've, I've, for so many years, you know, Anytime I would be doing something, I would always make sure I hired the best AV people because if there's one thing I don't want to have to deal with, it's AV problems. But there's really sort of no way around it. So uh, thanks for letting me just kind of <sighs> get some stuff out. Well, and uh, as I said, here's here's my um, my calendar again. If you want to talk to me, please uh, please do so. And um, I'll talk to you all next week. Jonathan is going to be our guest. We're going to learn about running your own production company. Woohoo! Right. Lots of people told Ooh. me they want to do that. So <clears throat> Jonathan is going to come and talk about that. All right. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Bye.